Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Open Book. I am Billy Price, co-founder of Billy Footwear, and I got to tell you today, I am so excited for this conversation. I say I'm excited about conversations a lot, but this one, this is a new territory for me, and I am just jazzed where this conversation is going to go. Sharing the screen with me today, we got Ryan DeClue, better known as Mr. Misfit. He is the brain behind the nonprofit called Misfit Toys Car Club, and I mean, I can't do it justice to describe it, so I'm going to pass it to Ryan. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you guys for for having me, and, and thank you to you and your your team for making uh, such an incredible product that can that can truly make an aspect of life so much easier for so many people. Yeah. Uh, you know, so Misfit Toys Car Club uh, is a registered charity organization, 501c3 nonprofit. And our mission statement is to help those on the autism spectrum and educate the general public as to what autism is and is not. Uh, along the way, that mission has been uh, changed and enhanced. Uh, we, we've moved to uh, you know, helping it, pretty much anybody in need, any kind of group, uh, children battling terminal illnesses, our, our armed forces, our, our men and women in uniform, first responders, you know, and our community in general. Uh, we, we do believe very, very much in, in community and what surrounds that. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, from being, being a child of the eighties and nineties, you know, that, uh, my, my version of community, uh, meant I have this ideal in my head of what community is and what it could be, especially within the car world. Uh, and that is how we get our message out there. We host automotive racing events, uh, time trial events, track day events, and things of that nature throughout the year. Uh, autocross events. Uh, we do one or two car shows upon request. Uh, you know, we do a special one every year for a young man that passed uh, that was an automotive enthusiast. And we try to bring our community together. And I try to be a cantankerous old man and bring back my childhood, uh, you know, and, and bring back a, a higher ideal and hopefully inspire people to come together and be more as a whole than they can be on their own. Yeah. So, I mean, cars have been in your blood for a while now, but how did, how did the mission of creating a nonprofit? I mean, what, what, what was the connection there? So, you know, I, I, uh, I started to become a car guy. I can, I can tell you the, I, the exact moment I became a car guy. It's been since 1993. I was watching Motor Week. Oh, I wasn't watching Motor Week on TV because back in the 80s and 90s, there really wasn't anything interesting as far as cars go. Uh, and then I heard Jonathan Davis as I'm walking outside down my apartment to go play with my friends, getting ready to walk downstairs. And I hear the new Dodge Viper. And I'm just like, oh, my God, what could possibly be named the Viper? And that was it. That was the moment I became a car guy. And I carried that through for a long, long time and grew up and loved cars and got to the age where I could have cars. Um, and we, you know, my son is on the severe end of the autism spectrum. And he was for the longest time completely and totally nonverbal. He could make some grunts. He could parrot some sounds. It's, it's a very common aspect of autism across the board. And the very first time I ever heard his voice, not a sound, not, not, not a grunt, not an approximation of a word, but the first time I heard his voice, it wasn't to say, I love you. It wasn't to say, dad, it was race car and motorcycle. And the very first things I ever heard out of him. So I thought, why not take my passion and move it forward and, and do this? So Misfit Toys Car Club was started and we started with a car show uh, some wonderful people at the uh, the Von Mauer Corporation. It's like an old school. Yeah, it's like an old school. For those that don't know, it's like an old school uh, department store. Very nice, classy, wonderful place to go. And we approached them uh, at uh, the Meadows Mall in Lake St. Louis, Missouri, and asked, you know, can we do a car show in your wonderful parking garage? It's this beautiful parking garage, really, you know, brickwork and everything. And they said yes. So we did that, and it was it was very successful. Uh, but we realized there are literally in the, just in the summertime alone, hundreds of car shows in Missouri. That's a lot of competition to try to bring, or I shouldn't say competition. I don't like to think of things in, the, in those terms with what we do, but there's, there's a lot of things, scheduling conflicts. Do we go here? Do we go here? You know, car shows have been established for 10, 15 years. It's a tradition to go. And while it was successful, we were leaving and it was, it was a lot of work. 
man, I, you know, when you start event organizing, because honestly, when it comes down to it, it's what we do where we, we organize events is, is a, amazingly difficult. And as we're leaving, I thought, uh, you know, this, maybe this isn't the thing we do. And as we're leaving on the left, there's this huge unused parking lot. They had, because they had lots and lots of parking. They were always full, but it's just this one parking lot in the back. And I looked over at my co-founder, my vice president, Christine, uh, who, by the way, Christine, if you see this, I, we can't do anything without that woman. She is amazing. She is the heart and soul. But I looked at her and I said, I'm going to race in that. We're going to get cars together. We're going to race in that. She looks at me and says, there is no way. There, there's nobody's even going to entertain that idea. And I said, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I call them up the next day and talk to the owner. And he says, absolutely. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Let's do this. And we did. And there is a highway, a major highway that goes in front of the mall. And we stopped thousands of cars, stopped and pulled in. To, you know, uh, to, throughout the day to do this. And people just like went home and came back with chairs and tables and set up. And we did it all day and the community jumped in on this and people came out of the woodwork to help us in different aspects, you know, and uh, we started out in a parking lot with a stopwatch. And that's, that's where we got, you know, we went from there. That's so incredible. I mean, and then to start, to start on such a, just an amazing success, I'm sure there's been tremendous growth since, and I'm sure that the kind of cars you get on the line now, it ranges from the classics to like the, I don't know, Tesla's. I mean, I don't even know. What are some of the cars that are racing at some of these? Literally anything you can think of and things you would never imagine we have had. We have had, we have everything from people in their daily drivers to supercars, the highest end supercars you can think of. We have things that I, I did not know were legal to own in the U S due to certain import laws and things. And I'm just assuming they are, I, you know, I don't know. I don't question, but we have everything. We, and we have had, we have had rock crawlers, dedicated rock crawlers come out and that are all caged and they'll strap the kids in and they'll drive around on two wheels. Uh, we did an event where the United States air force brought out this miniature F 22 Raptor jet that was built around a golf cart and drove that around, led a parade lap. Uh, I mean, just everything, you know, one of my favorite things is the people who come in, in these, the most mundane cars you can think of that come in off the street, have no idea what's going on. Find out that my events are open to the public or our events are open to the public and that they can do this. We had an event two, two years ago. I want to say two years ago, where we were at a local uh, local team's ballpark in the in the parking lot there, and this woman who must have been in her at least early 80s came in in her little Chevy Sonic and wanted to do it, and that woman went out there and drove the entire 10 hours. It was spectacular, and we have seen so many amazing vehicles. You know, we've seen Miatas that are built to take down Ferraris. Uh, oh wow! Just, just everything, everything you can think of comes out there, and we want that. We want this to be what it was decades ago when the sport was completely accessible. You know, uh, the 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 automotive racing world and uh, and competition world is unique among all sports because it is an absolute equalizer: gender, sex, race, age. Uh, geographical location, it doesn't matter once you're behind the wheel. And it, it allows everybody to come in there and do it. You know, we have so many new drivers come out there, 16 year olds that will come out with their parents and they get to learn car control in a way that they would never be able to do in any other environment. So, you know, <laughs> so I drive a Volkswagen van again, wheelchair accessible, and uh, it really makes you want to jump in that car right now or in Seattle, drive all the way to Missouri to be, get on the line. And hit the gas, it gets about, I don't know, zero to 60 in six minutes, but uh, at least I'll be out there participating. I've had minivans. I have had wheelchairs. I have had rascal scooters. I have had everything out on my courses, everything. So if you ever find the impetus to come out, you're welcome to come and drive. Oh, wow. Thank you. So talk about some of the uh, some of the kids that participate, because I mean, the charitable, you know, heartbeat of, of the event. I mean, talk about some of the... Um, I guess the donations, the gifts, I mean, just the, the reactions you get from the kids. 
you know, the uh, the kiddos that come out range from those that are on the spectrum or have special needs to the children in the community who are more neurotypical or, or physically more typical. Um, and their reactions to these cars just warm my heart. You know, my daughters uh, have told me, you know, in their school, they said before we started doing this, uh, no kid had any interest in cars. You know, the, the car culture with the newer generation had kind of died down unless you happen to be in a car family, car centric family. Uh, whereas I remember when I was a kid, you know, it, it locally here, we had drag strips and things and, and locally in other places with racetracks. This is a thing you do, whether you're into cars or not, you gather up with the family on the weekend, you go to the racetrack, whatever it may be, and you hang out and watch cars. And these kids get to come out and do these cars. Uh, and, and to not put too fine a point on it, we get a lot of people from areas who are not uh, necessarily privileged, inner city, things like that. And we make sure to get these kids out there and they get to experience these things that maybe they would not have otherwise gotten to at this point in their life. Uh, you know. And of course, our, our ride-alongs at these events are always free. We get these kids out there. We get adults out there. All kinds of people get to go out there with with these drivers and these incredible cars and get taken around uh, the the course or the track, whatever we may do. And they get to experience it firsthand. They don't just get to just have to watch. Um, you know, we we get a lot of uh, we've had a lot of kids come out uh, uh, wheelchair bound, a few of them, and get them in there when it's physically possible to get them into a seat safely. Uh, get them out there. And it's just. There is nothing that compares to the look on a child's face when they're experiencing happy like, happiness like that. Because we as adults are so far past that point of innocence that we cannot experience that except vicariously through those children. And there is nothing more fulfilling than watching them be that happy with those cars. And the thing is, is that once you make a car guy from childhood, that's it. It's forever. That's that is it is you will start out with Hot Wheels, which are I'm going to tell you right now, it's a far more expensive habit than having the real car. Hot Wheels will get you. It's a dollar here, a dollar there. And all of a sudden you got no money. But uh, it, just start them out with that and it'll it'll be a lifelong thing for them. And we want to bring them out. And furthermore, we want to show people that you don't have to be a wealthy individual to do this. You can you can do you can have a nine to five job and have a vehicle that you go out and, and enjoy and, and track. And, and there's so many vehicles out there that are affordable that people don't realize are. And you can do this affordably. You don't have to break your car. You know, track days and autocross days, things are set up specifically where if you are following the rules laid out, you can have a wonderful time and not destroy your vehicle. So we want them to have that hobby. We want them to know that the opportunity to have that hobby is out there. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, it's, it's just being a part of the team, you know, being part of the club. You know, you're telling all these stories, two things that come to mind here. One is um, I'm thinking back on now being in a wheelchair. One of the best days that I had um, when it came to automotive was I got to ride in a sidecar um, alongside a wheelchair and or alongside a motorcycle. And the gentleman that was driving that motorcycle, he, um, earlier in his life, he actually got in a motorcycle accident. So he lost a leg. So he was, he equipped it out his trike, I guess. And, uh, so he could drive it with only one leg. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I was able to ride shotgun with him. And you talk about those smiles and, uh, that, that childhood spirit. Um, I remember a friend of mine took a picture of me while I was in that, um, in that motorcycle, I was pouring down rain. And you couldn't see my face, but you could see the cheekbones up a little bit. And you knew I was smiling ear to ear. Even though you couldn't see the smile, you knew I was having the time of my life. And you talk about, and speaking of kids, and you talk about those little uh, matchbox cars. So my son is two years old, and he's got quite the matchbox collection. And uh, he loves the Shelby. So I think I might be in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, they're so, but like I said, that starts out an addiction that lasts forever and it ends up being more expensive the more you go into the Hot Wheels. There was a time when I got into it pretty deep, you know, and you talked about the gentleman losing the leg. There are so many videos out there and there are several racers in particular that you can find that drive things like the Nürburgring with just hand controls. There's even one that I know of that drives with mouth controls. He is a quadriplegic and he races cars. 
It's it, it can be for anyone. There are several companies dedicated to those with physical disabilities to getting them into a car and making it operational for them at a performance level. Uh, it's just anybody can do this and anybody should do it. You know, uh, we're big proponents of especially people who are student drivers getting out there on permits. You know, if you're out there with your parents, I want you to be able to experience this. You know, one of the things we do a speech and a talk before every everything at the uh, driver's meeting. And we explain to people, you at this point believe that you know your car. After this event, you'll realize you didn't, but you will a little bit better at the end of it. So just getting anybody and everybody in there, regardless of situation, is 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 a big, big thing for us. So for everyone that's watching and listening in, uh, how can they find you? Well, you can go to our events page. It is at facebook.com forward slash Misfit Toys Autism. That's where we post up all the event things. We're on Instagram, Misfit Toys Car Club. Uh, that's pretty much all the social media we do at the moment. We are working on a website currently. We want it to be uh, uniquely accessible and easy for anybody to get on there. Uh, all of our social media, uh, I take great pains to make sure that is always family friendly uh, and clean for everybody. So anybody can get on there. Don't be afraid to let your kids on there. And there's videos and such. And, uh, and then we have call buttons. You know, if anybody has any questions, they can reach me directly right through the Facebook page. Awesome. Well, earlier in our discussion here, you were mentioning Von Maurer. And I think it's important we bring them back into the equation here because it was Von Maurer that brought our two worlds together. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I was in there. Uh, my friend's youngest is uh, on the severe end of the autism spectrum as well. And we went in there to uh, find a little dude some new shoes. And we were looking around and I, uh, she picked these up. The, the the billy shoe and showed it to me this little gray canvas it is canvas correct it's canvas correct. Shoe, yes. yep. and showed it to me and showed me the zipper and i'm just like oh my god this is this is amazing and he saw it and i showed it to him immediately he just loses it he understands immediately that this is something he can set his foot in without having the compression and sensation of trying to push his foot in there which is a hard thing to do. And it was just, it was manna from heaven. You know, the, the angelic choir, the lights came down, the whole deal. I'm like, this is amazing. And I got to talk to these guys, you know, and I sent you that initial email there and connected with you. And it's just, I am just shocked at the simplicity of that product, you know, of your shoe and what it means for so many. And like I was telling you when we've talked previously, you know, it's it's not even for those who have a physical need or might be in the category of elderly moving a little slower, not able to do it as well. Just any parent who's trying to get a toddler dressed in the morning, this is, you're shaving an hour off just putting these shoes on. It's, it's amazing, it's so perfect. I'm just, I'm so grateful. Uh, that it exists, that, that you that you did this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm so glad you're able to find us. I'm so glad that uh, for the success story, and I'm just really excited to share of, there's just so many great things um, coming, coming in 21. I mean, so well, many great things have happened so far. And Like I said, you guys need to work on a driving shoe. Yeah, you okay. Gotta, you got to okay. give me a driving shoe, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's super, super cool. Uh, I can't I can't wait to, to get a pair for everybody. I really can't. And uh, – Definitely look forward to uh, all the styles you've got coming up. I look forward to seeing more in, in that Von Maurer. You know, as I told you, I've, I've been going to that Von Maurer for a long time. It's very special to me. So definitely look forward to seeing more there. And I hope hope they get to see them everywhere. I can't wait to show people when we have our events this year, uh, these, uh, these shoes. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, Von Maurer has been an awesome partner. They've been great to work with. Also in the Midwest, we have Shields too. So oh, okay. yeah. those two have been great. So Ryan, I mean, this, I love this talk and you and I could talk forever. I mean, it's such an easy conversation, but you know, before we sign off here, um, I just want to give you the mic one more time, just kind of share whatever's on your heart. I mean, we could talk about stuff we've already talked about or something new, but the mic is yours. Um, you know, I, I really, for anybody that watches this, uh, doing good is not hard. It is, it is a much harder decision to do harm within the scope of your lifetime than it is to smile and make someone's life better by extension. You know, it, we all we all have to do is simply say to to, you know, to kind of crib 
Dickens here a little bit. You need to see your fellow man as more than just travelers to the grave. Uh, we can come together and be more as a whole than we are individually at any time for any reason. Uh, I know that the last year has been really hard on everybody mentally and financially, et cetera. But there are things like the Misfit Toys Car Club events there, are, you know, whatever it may be that you can come together and support uh, other people. You know, if, if you want to look around uh, and see the negative in the world, there's a lot of it. There definitely is. But all you have to do to be happy in life is count your blessings and you'll find exactly what you've been looking for. Awesome. Yeah. Eloquent. Perfect. It's all about trying to add value. I mean, our, our mission statement here is trying to make a measurable difference in the world one third of the time. And it's really rooted in that adding value. And uh, it's incredible how we, and I'm saying we as in everybody's listening here, um, we as a community, how much good we can actually do when we come together. So that's, and that's a, that's a big word. That's a word that gets overlooked so much. We, two letters, but it means so much. We, me and you together to make this bigger thing and that's that's all it has to be is we instead of i and that doesn't mean you have to give up on your dreams or your individual advancements or you know that and that's what life's about is striving to to better yourself but when you come together as we and everybody's better everything is better yeah yeah absolutely i couldn't say it better myself <laughs> ryan thank you so much for your time today this was truly thank special you. i mean Wow, everyone, please go check out Misfit, Misfit Car, Misfit Toys Car Club. I, I'm i serious, Ryan. I might jump behind the wheel and drive all the way out there, dude. I mean, what you got going is really hopping. Got some really great events coming up at Worldwide Technology in Illinois. It's going to be a lot of fun this year. That's awesome. Everyone else that was listening in, this was another episode of Open Book. We'll see you again next week. Take care.